And speaking of hard to get information out of, later on in the show, I had probably the hardest guest to get information out of, Stipe Miocic. And holy smokes, the things that he said about you, DC, I don't know if you read the interview, but he called you an idiot. He said that you speak out of both sides of your mouth, that you make up things, that, you know, the, 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 this idea that you're calling him entitled is just in, 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 ludicrous. He said it's going to be your last fight on August 17th. I was taken aback. I didn't know there was he, this kind of bad blood. Stipe said he's going to retire me. Oh, yeah, he said, that's it. You're done. Yeah, that's funny. I'm going to beat his ass. <laughs> I'm just going to beat his ass, Ariel. That's fine. But thank you for joining that's our it. show. Because you see how I tried to turn the tables on you there. I know. Well, he's, see, he's seeing red now. He can't. He, DC literally, if you see him on the screen, he can't think. He's just seeing red. He lost all Ariel, train of thought. Thank you for killing my vibe. You can do that at times. You're good for that at times. How similar is the feeling when you think about that pass interference call and then you hear him telling you that Stipe's talking shit. Like, uh, well, this is a difference, right? The Stipe thing I can do something about, right? I can beat him up about. <laughs> but is it you know, that's right, the best. That's a, it like, get... that's the best, right? Stipe can say, oh, he's an idiot and he's this and he's that. But then I can just kick his ass again. But does right? it get you? ultimately, I had the last laugh in the whole thing with me and Stipe, and I get to do it again. So that's well, kind of how that thing plays out. But when, he, but when you hear same, that, like, if, like instantly when you hear it, does it like make your blood move a little faster, or is it just kind of whatever? Well, you know. We're kind of like, we're fighters, of, we're a different breed, you know, we're like, hey, you motherfucker. Like, right away, I'm like, oh, Stipe, you son of a bitch. But I like it, though, because first time, he's like all chummy, and he's all quiet, and he doesn't want to build a fight. Now, at least he's like being vocal about how he feels, you know, mm -hmm. like, be vocal. Tell me how you feel, and tell me how much you want to kick my ass, so that when I kick your ass again, then you're like in a dark room, you know, like, just done. Like, he's gonna be, yeah. he's gonna be done. Like, after this one, it'll be very hard for Stipe to, uh, to get back to where uh, he once was because this one's gonna break him because I know what the second Jones fight did to me. It almost broke me. Yeah. But all my life experiences, you know, my father, my cousin, my daughter, my roommate, all those life experiences allowed me to keep things in perspective. Whereas he really hasn't had to do that. So when he loses in this spot, um, I don't think he'll he'll be able to recover from it. It's gonna be too much. Yeah. I do think the um, the Pettis Diaz fight, like I was excited just you know to see Nate come back, and then Pettis is always exciting. But I was I had no idea there was this bad blood, and I was listening to that yesterday, and I was yeah. like, oh, that got me like amped up times a thousand because you really want. I mean, the Diaz is going to be able to manufacture hostility no matter what, but yep. I just I wish you could be a fly on the wall when he's listening to this to Pettis talking about how much he fucking hates him at all what he's gonna do he's gonna be so fired up he's gonna be just you know you want to be a good fight. when they fight you want them to feel like they're going to war which they always say they feel yeah. like but now it's gonna be that's gonna be good there's just something about Nate Diaz you know he's like got that he's got that swagger that Northern California type of you know like you know I am what I am I'm I'm, I'm the bay you know I am the bay you yeah. know and I'm a guy that's from there I represent this you know Stockton and and it's like if, if i want to fight you know i'm from a, i'm from a scrappy place you know what well, we have to scrap for everything and i just want to go find the fight and anthony pettis is that guy that will engage you in that fight you want to fight i'm here right yeah. that's pettis and uh it's a great fight and look I, I can't be disappointed about the way this thing is starting i mean shh, me and stipe diaz pettis costa versus romero i mean it's just three fights yeah no, they just got awesome. three fights done, and those are the three. We might I mean, have, we have to do a remote. We might have to do a remote from down there, Dennis. Yeah, that'd be fun. I don't cut weight anymore. Just give me. I time. don't cut weight anymore, so we can be down in Anaheim on a Wednesday, <laughs> doing a talk and talk alive. <laughs> we can do that, the open workout. Yeah. We can sit at the open workouts and do a talk and talker. Yeah. A, I don't cut weight. It. I'm not dying anymore when I'm at the, at the fight. I feel like, I was dying. I now feel, I get to enjoy the ride. Yeah. He got all my power. That's why Stipe, he got, Stipe got it all. Like he got all my power. Yeah. Is there something? Is there something? Is there something different since the? It feels like lately, like when he was saying, uh, Ariel was saying that that Nate's been itching to fight and training. It feels like.
Pettis said the same thing. There's more guys that have just decided, I'm going to just keep, and Dustin said the same thing. Like, I'm just going to start training, and somewhere when I'm training, a fight's going to come along. Versus before, it felt like guys sat around, got out of camp, then they'd get a fight, then they'd start training. Is there... Has there been like some memo saying, guys, I want all you guys staying in fight shape. We're gonna we're gonna start scheduling these things closer. We never stop. Like we never would stop training. We would always just kind of be in the gym. You know, even me, like at my age now, like I'm there three days a week. I mean, like three days. It's not five and six, but like three days a week I try to do something. I eat run, I eat pads, I eat the spar, I wrestle. I'm doing something three days like, a week I mean, just because Dennis is four. Dennis is more active than you when you're not in camp. Yes, for sure. But before I was there every day, right? When I first yeah. started, I would go Monday to Friday because I had nothing else going on. Yeah. Now I have so much shit from TV to this, to that, to this, that I'm always on the run. But every time I'm in town, I try to go to the gym. Now that I can train again after my back. But you, uh, it's the same. But now guys are like, they're like, I took fights on short notice. I fought Bigfoot Silver with five weeks before a fight just because I was training. It was a matter of just amping it up a little bit to uh get ready to be to go 15 minutes in the in the fight but uh guys are getting the call now like they know that the ufc does not want to cancel fights they don't want to remove guys from the card so your opportunity could be any day you just got to be prepared to go so you got to stay in shape but again those guys are taking it to the next level still they're training but they're not like training as if they're getting ready for a fight until they get that call yeah you know uh this whole uh, Dustin Poirier Khabib thing is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be a great fight. Poirier is so big now at 155. Isn't it hard to believe that he was a 45 pounder before? He was like, you see how big he looked against Max Holloway? Yeah. Just no. a massive guy for the lightweight division. And he was going all the way down the. It was weird because you didn't. I didn't realize how tall Max was, and then he thought, oh, and his re and you're like, oh, Max is a big guy, but then he just seemed. He just wasn't as thick, you know. Poirier is like no, not as thick. You saw yeah. Dustin's back; it was yeah. crazy how big his back was. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I uh, <laughs> you all right? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I you just thought about you just thought I about how many, start crying. You just, like, you just uh, thought about how many. All of a sudden, Chris Ball staying for four more years popped through your head. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you about a guy who beat Anderson Silva on very short notice at UFC 200, the current UFC heavyweight champion. Daniel Cormier, he has a fight coming up on August 17th against Stipe Miocic, but he told me on Monday that, yeah, I, I, I really do want that John Jones fight, and if I do take that fight, I want it at 205. Are you surprised by, A, the fact that he's finally admitting that he does want that fight when, when you know, for the last year or so he has said that he's moving on from it, but maybe more importantly that he would take it at 205 when he has to, you know, or he would prefer it at 205, or maybe I should say only wants it at 205 because his reasoning was, he beat me twice then. I have to beat him at 205. I don't care if I'm better at heavyweight. If it's healthy for me at heavyweight, I have to do it at 205. Are you surprised by any of this? I'm not surprised by any of it. Um, you know, I've had conversations with people around D.C. for the last year that says that that, that that was always the case, that he was always still obsessed with John Jones, that he has been obsessed with John Jones from basically the beginning. You know, that's what made their rivalry so good was that DC, like, I mean, he kind of put that on himself. He put that pressure on himself that he said, I have to beat this guy, that my legacy is tied to John Jones. You know, no one else, I mean, sure, a lot of us would have put that on him himself, but he welcomed it. I mean, he acknowledged it. He said, yeah, I got to beat this guy. My career comes down to beating this guy. And that's why you saw so much emotion out of him at UFC 214 when he lost to John Jones for the second time. And he's like, well, I guess there's no rivalry because I lost to him again. I mean, he has, in, in a roundabout way, sort of made his career about John Jones. And even like over the last year, when he when he basically separated that, and that's one of the reasons why I said that, that Daniel Cormier was the fighter of the year in 2018 because he took that narrative of like, oh, he's always attached to John Jones, he's always attached to John Jones, but then he separated himself from it by going up to heavyweight and doing something that Jones never did, and you know, winning three fights last year and, and being a dual champion. I mean, he he finally separated himself from John Jones. But when I talked to people around him, they still told me that he was obsessed with Jones. That, that he, he continues to be obsessed with him. So it doesn't surprise me at all that, that, that DC is coming back around on this idea of fighting John Jones. Uh, it does surprise me that he wants it at 205. Why? Uh, that just makes absolutely no sense to me. I mean, it's, it's better for him to be at heavyweight, uh, not only just, just like... Not even from the standpoint of, oh, I think that he has a better chance of beating John at heavyweight, which, granted, he probably does, but why is this guy ever going to cut to 205 again? Like, why? Like, that's a bigger thing than me. I don't care if it's John Jones or anybody else at 205. 
Like, I just don't need to see him undergo that cut at age 40. So that part of it surprises me, and I disagree with it. And quite frankly, if I'm being honest, if I, if I was if I was close to DC, if I was a buddy of his, I'd be telling him, dude, you don't need to fight John Jones again, man. Like, why? 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 Why bring it all the way back to John Jones, man? Like, you're good. Your legacy is solid. You've you finally carved out a legacy that's completely independent of John Jones. Like, why put yourself through that again? And, and if we're being quite honest, I mean, he's 40. What is John? 30? Like, I'm not saying that, that it's not like a fair fight at that point, but. You know, I mean, why? You, you just don't need it. You don't need a third fight with John Jones. Like, fight Stipe and then, and then potentially retire. You know, I mean, that's why I was so on board with the idea of him fighting Brock Lesnar, even though it goes against sort of the purest view of it. And I didn't, obviously, I didn't think Brock Lesnar deserved a title shot. It was like, that would have been a perfect way for DC to go out. You know, fighting John, I guess it could be a perfect way for him to go out. But if I was close to him, I would tell him, you don't need to do it. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, I guess in a nutshell, this is what makes him so special. He is such a competitor, and he really just wants to beat him at the weight class that that he lost to him twice. But I do agree, it feels like we are further away from those two losses than ever, and it doesn't feel like that's a cloud hanging over him anymore. It doesn't feel like he gets, you know, made fun of for being a paper champion like he is. Arguably, you know, one of the greatest fighters of all time, undefeated as a heavyweight, knocked out, the winning is heavyweight champion. I mean, like, he's done a lot. Um, and so it feels like it's just a personal thing at this point. But I would hate for him to fight him again at 205 in his retirement fight and to end on a loss, on a heartbreaking loss. Like, he doesn't deserve that. He shouldn't put himself through that. But I guess that's what I respect about him, the fact that he wants it. I would say I understand why he wants the 205 fight and all that stuff. I would then say, if I'm John Jones and his team, what do you think of this scenario? I say, yeah, thanks. Thanks for giving me this fight. You know, right now, there aren't a ton of big money fights for John Jones. Tiago Santos isn't a big money fight. Maybe if Luke Rockhold wins in July, that's an intriguing fight. But it's nothing like Jones versus DC. Brock isn't out there right now. So there's not a lot going on as far as big. Do uh, you want to go back real quick to the to this? Anthony Joshua. So people dug up a post from March with him and Drake. And this, then, is, this is kind of silly. This it is, is silly. It's 100%. silly because you're going you're going back. Now, if he posts this at while well, he's at the game, that's fine. But you can't just post like Drake takes pictures with how many people, and he's way more famous than the athlete he's going to ever meet, right? So, he, and he goes, to, he's a fan of boxing or whatever. He travels all over the world, London, all over. So he's going to take pictures with everybody. So eventually, when everyone has a downfall you can post a picture of drake like damn seven years ago he visited them in dubai it's like okay i don't think that's why they're losing but it, it is a funny coincidence because he mentioned it this is gonna break the curse hold up joshua posted this yes about to break the curse yes <laughs> well forget everything i just said <laughs> why would he do that why would you bring that bad juju on yourself I don't know. People are talking about it. Kind of an awkward picture. Kind of silly. Yeah, I don't know. What else you got? Um, Drake can't. I mean, I love Drake. I don't like. Have, 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 well, I kind of like it because it, although the the stations, like the sports stations, all they talk about is Drake at the game. Now it's become Drake versus Golden State instead of Toronto versus Golden State. It's Drake versus Golden State. It's just funny how he's touching the fucking coach's shoulders and shit. He's talking shit to Draymond Green. What were you thinking though? This is what you don't want to do. You don't want to fire up a professional athlete, give them more motivation. So they go, excuse me? And then they've been uh, doing it for so long, they're just going to ball out like Draymond Green did in Toronto. Balled the fuck out and they won. What's this? Uh, Dan made this. It's a collection of social media posts after Andy Ruiz's win. So Connor McGregor even said, I know firsthand the toughness of a Mexican chin. They come up off the floor like something on a thriller. It's never over until it's over with the Mexicans. God bless them. Congrats, Andy Ruiz. Yeah. And this is Ariel Hawani. I guess it's a wrestling move called the DX Chop. So that's what Andy Ruiz Damn, did. Damn, Ruiz shocked the world and DX chopped him all on the way out. Legend. Okay. This if is, Snickers doesn't give Andy Destroyer one, so his handle is at Andy underscore Destroyer one. The heavyweight champion of the world commercial deal after this endorsement, I will never eat a Snickers again. That's at least 3% of your profits. Don't risk it. That's Gabriel hilarious. Iglesias. That's hilarious. Dude, th Andy's set for the rest of his life, man. He's set. Mexican heavyweight champion 
You're set, even though he's born in California. The worst thing you can do in life is fucking quit. Uh, he wasn't a true champion. His whole career was consistent of lies, contradiction, and gifts, facts, and now we know who's running from who. This was tough to read. He, this, but here, this is if you know the backstory, my brother sent me this and was like, dude, uh, how about Deontay Wilder? Wilder is so upset, not at Joshua, but the way things were handled and the way they dangled the carrot in front of his fucking face. He's he's he has this chip on his shoulder. He's yeah. pissed, man. Because he's like, I fucking told you guys, man, this was going to happen. And this is what happened. So instead of being like, oh, Joshua, it's all good, you come back. He's upset because you fucked it up for the three the three of them. There's a fraternity of three heavyweights that can own this, this platform and the greed of Eddie Hearn fucked it up. It has to be Hearn, right? I'm, I'm telling you, that's what it is, Jim. Yes. That, so when Wilder lashes out, he's so upset for the sport of boxing. He's not, it's not because he's talking shit to Joshua. The, where he's coming here, it's, it's, that's all at his team, not just Joshua. So as soon as I saw it, oh, he's just, he's really upset. Mm. He's just, he's mad. He's coming from a place of anger. I saw a post-fight interview with one of the reporters that was talking to Joshua about the Wilder thing. And he said something like, it was supposed to be him or it should have been him that knocked me out. Something like that. That's why Wilder, that's why Wilder's lashing out this poison. Cause like I fucking, you fucked it up, guys. Uh, and then Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury. We have our back and forth, but Anthony Joshua changed his stars through life. Heavyweight boxing, these things happen. Rest up, recovery, regroup, and come again. Yeah. He's great on social media. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what it is. Uh, congratulations to the Mexican warrior Andy Ruiz on a historic win. Demonstrated tremendous heart, resilience, and determination. Underdog stories like this are why we love the sport. Agree. Yeah, that was Steven Espinosa. Polly, this was a si si puede. If I ever saw one. Nice, man. How many more of these? A little more than a year, Andy Ruiz. Oh, here you go. A little more than a year ago, Andy Ruiz Jr. Re represented himself as his own manager, was offered $30,000 to fight Anthony Joshua. Last night, he got $7 million for the fight. Now, as a heavyweight champ, he will make even more. Yeah, because they have to do the rematch for us. Mm. Anthony Joshua put, this is Andy's night. Congratulations, champ. Beautiful. I think that's good, but I also want to, again, put yourself in Anthony Joshua's uh, sheets this morning. Most girls are like, yes, sir. Um, <laughs> but put yourself in his bed this morning. But here's my only knock on this. I I like when the guy's like pissed. Like, I, I like he's a good sport, but he's fucking distraught. Maybe Joshua's just a good actor. He was but saying this mental game. didn't seem to really give a fuck. He was all, man, yeah, what can you he do? He said he has to stay positive, so he's just trying to look at the positive stuff. He's, he can only move forward from here. That's fine, and I, and I love that mindset, but I need you to kill, care a little more. And maybe he does. I don't know the dude at all. This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he is smiling. Oh, no, he's probably like, what the hell's going on? No. He's like, I believe like, oh, hell no. Yeah, I don't know, it happened. That stoppage know. too was weird, right? When the guy's like, do you want to fight? He's like, yeah, I do, I want, I want to fight. But I guess he saw something that Joshua couldn't continue. Yeah, his eyes were probably all googly. Yeah, yeah. in the beginning. Is it? Yeah, Isn't that a technique though? Spit your mouth, piece out, get more time. Not if you want to win. Spit your mouth and turn your back. That's definitely a way out. When the ref says, come to me, you have to walk right to I think, I think Joshua thought it was going to be an easy night, even though it's so stupid because he's around, surrounded by morons. He thought it was going to be an easy night. Was like, holy fuck, this guy's a, not a good matchup for me. I'm going to fight in my life and just wasn't mentally prepared to go through it. And the next fight's going to be a lot better, but still going to be a fucking fight, whether he's prepared or not. But I just think Joshua was expecting for... Ruiz kind of cash it in and just make it easy for him to hit. And when he realized, oh, I'm in a dog fight, he's like, fuck, dude. And just wasn't there that night. Indeed. All right, this is a little older from last week. I don't think we talked about it yet, but UFC's. <laughs> Speaking of getting paid. But Yoel Romero, his guy, one of the Kawa brothers, 
represented him for that tainted supplement thing that he went through. And apparently he was awarded uh, the judgment of $27 million from that company. Well, the Malky yeah, brothers? The other about Abraham, I think. Abraham. Tell you, man, them boys, that's who you want to go with, man. They get people paid. And then if you saw to come sniff around, they fight for you. Yeah. God is always good. I see you soon, boy. Thank you, Abraham Kawa, first round management, Malky. Yeah, man, them boys can dudes paid. But according <laughs> to Romero's team, which includes attorney Howard Jacobs and Kawa, the breakdown down is roughly three million for the lost wages. Three million, three million. Okay. Now, I wonder if they'll actually get that much money. No, everyone's saying that the company will just Fold. file for bankruptcy because it's not a huge company. It's like one of those online companies. So will you not give me, get any money? From what I'm hearing from people talking about this, it seems like if he gets anything, it'll be so small. Ah, oh, man, I'll to be right after the sunset. I went to that website too. There, it's like Gold Star. The first thing I did was go to Usada's, you know, high risk list and just type in Gold Star, and it popped up a, a few times. Thanks. Well, I wish you got all that money. Yeah, that'd be sweet if you did. What else you got? I got. Paulie Malinaji, he's taking it like a, another step further, saying that he was, he's ready to spit on Artem Lobov's, Lobov's mom. Hey, man. If it got to that point. These boys are taking another level. I don't re, re I, what's he say? I don't regret About it what because the line was crossed a long time ago. You can't take spitting or anything else out of context. This line was crossed two years ago. Once you cross that line, you can't set a new line. Not only do I not regret it, if his mother was at the press conference, I'd have spit on her too. There's no reason to regret anything. I'm ashamed I couldn't do more. Once you cross that line with me, we can just go. Malinology is referring to the uh, time as a sparring partner for Connor back when Notorious, okay, okay. And so that was the, when the line was crossed? That's when it began. Connor's team, obviously Arden was part of Connor's team or is part of Connor's team. Spitting. Man. I think he's just talking about how like he's been doing this. He can't go back from this. He has to go further. Okay. But spitting on the mother, that's just kind of crazy. That's so intense. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and Tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.